City, Florida, 96.5, the Jet, WJTK, brand new affiliate, the Gateway to Florida. Clarksville, Tennessee, joined up this week, Newsy 105.5 and 1400 WNZE. Great to have you and Fort uh, Campbell join us. Billingham, Washington, week two for KGMI. News Talk 790-96.5 and KGMI.com. More and more affiliates each week. I think they are looking for the news you need, the analysis you want, and you find it here. I begin today with the horrific shootings in Atlanta. I do so mindful, probably my largest audience in terms of just pure numbers in the Atlanta metro area. Largest share in the right time, bigger than Philadelphia, bigger than New York. Bigger than Cleveland and Columbus, bigger than Cincinnati, bigger than any of my East Coast markets. Uh, LA, it's too early in the morning for LA to have that many people, although it's a large share, ditto San Francisco and San Diego, but it's, it's a huge audience in Atlanta and it's a, a city that's reeling. From the shooting at two massage parlors, and my heart goes out to the families and the businesses and everyone affected there, the police and everybody affected. I do note, however, that the coverage has worked overtime to fit a narrative that may not be true. The New York Times, Georgia killings deepen fears of rising anti-Asian hate in the U.S. Um, the same story is true pretty much on every single website about the killer, with one exception where it's apparently being blamed on his being a Southern Baptist. I don't know what happened down there yet. We'll find out more. I think we have a psychotic break and a young killer who is in thrall of his weird obsession with sexuality. And I don't know that it has anything to do with his victims, that they're Asian, but American media is going to tell us that whether or not it is the case. Let's give a listen, if we can, to the Frank Reynolds, the Cherokee County Sheriff, cut number six. Uh, he, we did interview him last night. He is currently in our facility at the Cherokee County Adult Detention Center. Uh, we were able to interview him uh, with the Atlanta Police Department and the FBI. Um, he made indica uh, ind indicators that um, uh, he has uh, some, some issues, uh, potentially uh, sexual addiction, and... Um, uh, may have frequented some of these places in the past, and, um, and but as the chief indicated, it's still early on. We still have a lot of uh, uh, things to process, and um, so uh, he should be at an arraignment tomorrow at some time early uh, morning uh, uh, to uh, late morning, and we will keep you up to date. We have a press release that Captain Baker has put together uh, available to our, our media folks. Uh, if you don't have that, I think we have some printed copies that he'll be uh, happy to give to you. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have sure. at the moment. So are you saying, when you talk to the suspect, mm -hmm. he says he has a sexual addiction, addiction issue, but I'm sure you asked him, was this racially motivated? Was this racially motivated? Um, as the chief indicated, uh, it's still early, but uh, the indicators right now are, uh, uh, it, it may not be. Uh, it may be targets of opportunity. Uh, again, we are we believe that he frequented these places in the past, and, um, and uh, may have been lashing out. Uh, and part of that is is in your media packet as well. But the working theory is a sexual addiction issue athlete. rather than a, a, a racial profile. Uh, uh, it, during our interviews, uh, we asked that specific question, and uh, and that did not appear to be uh, the motive. For, we want to hold for, 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 questions until the athlete yes. let us get through Thank the you. press conference, and then we'll answer any questions. You see, now, I don't know if that was Jay Baker or if that was the sheriff. Jay Baker is a captain in the Atlanta, uh, in the Cherokee County Sheriff's Department, and the sheriff is Frank Reynolds. So I'm not sure if that was Jay Baker or Frank Reynolds. A backlash developed against the sheriff's spokesman, whose name was Jay Baker, because he said the shooting suspect was having a bad day. Um, he wasn't expressing sympathy. I think he was just recounting probably something he heard from the the suspect. Then reporters, again, eager to make the narrative work, went to Jay Baker, the police spokesman's website, and found Facebook posts promoting shirts that called the novel, novel con uh, coronavirus a, quote, imported virus from China. Now, 
that's really working overtime to fit the narrative. If he was a racist, we will find out. But it is clear the media wants him to be a racist. The second narrative that developed, this is really astonishing. In the Washington Post, Sarah Pulliam Bailey. Years before being suspected of killing eight people in a suburb of Atlanta, including six Asian women, Robert Aaron Long was active in his Southern Baptist congregation, his youth pastor said Wednesday. As a teenager, Long would stack chairs and clean floors at Crabapple First Baptist Church. There's nothing I'm aware of at Crabapple that would get approval of this, said Cottrell, his youth pastor. I'm assuming it's shocking and numbing to them as it has been to me. Cottrell said he viewed a 2018 video of Long describing his conversion to the Christian faith at around eight years old when he was baptized. Cottrell considered him a typical teenager growing up in the suburbs of Atlanta. It's not unusual for young men to be into video games. Was he around guns and hunting? Yeah. Would I consider him to be obsessed? No. Was it part of his life? Yeah. At that time, I would classify it as one of the main things he was involved in. Had he been deer hunting? Yeah. I don't know what I would have considered to be a massive chunk of his life. But during those teenage years, Cottrell said the church youth group was his deal. Cottrell said the church was predominantly white, but it included several people of Asian and African descent. I don't recall any sermons dealing specifically with racism, but the general tenor was he was everyone was welcome, be as inclusive as possible. In a statement to the Post, church elders at Crabapple First Baptist said they were heartbroken. We grieve for the victims and their families and continue to pray for them. Um, it's a it's a obviously a piece attempting to make the church the bad guy here. Now I can't tell you how many millions of kids, teenagers, go to church and youth group. I, you know, I've been a big fan of Young Life for a long time. I can't tell you how many sermons they, they talked about a sermon being given at Crabapple on the King is Coming Again, about eschatology. I can't tell you how many sermons are preached every weekend in America about eschatology. This is a fairly transparent attempt to link a mass murder to Baptists. And I, I think it's despicable. Uh, and I don't know if he's a, a racist. I think he may have just had a psychotic break, and we won't know for a while. But to, a, to then go to the police spokesman's Facebook page, and that's another Washington Post story, and find a Facebook post promoting shirts called the novel coronavirus, an imported virus from China, is a reach to try and turn the police into racist. Woke reporting is everywhere. It's very disturbing. It's just very disturbing. And I, I we will continue to cover this to find out why exactly he went on a shooting rampage. He is probably a guilt-wracked, psychotic break young man, but I don't know and nobody knows and if, the, if he wasn't a racist, if they're unfortunately, sadly, victims of being in the wrong place when a kid broke, just like every other murder victim at school shootings and at every other mass shooting, at workplace shooting, don't make it a race crime if it's not a race crime. If it is, let's find out about it. But if it is, and don't blame the Southern Baptists. My goodness. You know, the, the church people are the people who are sending in money for food for the poor. I, I'm getting thousands of people donating money to food for the poor. And it's a, it's a great thing to do that because food for the poor is feeding, feeding people who are otherwise starving in Honduras. I would bet that most of those people, not all, but most of those people have a deep religious faith. And I encourage you, please, to make a donation over at youhewitt.com today. But I, I have been reading at the same time Archbishop Chaput's new book, Things Worth Dying For, Thoughts on the Life Worth Living, which came out this week. And he warns religion is going to be targeted, faith is going to be targeted in the next 30 years. And if you take a look at this narrative, instead of focusing on the victims and their families, the media is attempting to delegitimize religion 